Uh, my name is Jake Ryan. I am the founder and director of Open Bench Project. And I came to Portland when I was uh, 15, my son's age now, and I drove my friend's car around without a license uh, in the city all day long, totally lost, and fell in love with the, the city. So I guess that's the first time I came to Portland. I just did an, a wood inlay project. Uh, occasionally I'll dabble on the wood lathe downstairs working on stuff. I'm doing a whole bunch of CNC cutting lately. Um, I just I mess around with a whole bunch of tools. I run the the machining lathe downstairs just so I can see if I can cut stuff really smooth. Um, I guess the project that I got really interested in lately is I want to start animating creepy old dolls. Um, because it seems to weird people out. Or they weird people out anyways, and I think that. I'm interested in making a robot. I guess I've, as an architect, I've built a lot of stable things over the years, and so one of the things I've been interested in the last year and a half or so is making stuff that does stuff. So, and you know, automation of, of things has, has become fascinating for me, and robotics is one of the, one of the sort of the, the pieces of it. I've built the three D printer here and the CNC machine, the quad copters and other stuff like that. So I can make stuff do stuff. Um, I want to get more whimsy into it though. The three D printer is a robot, but it doesn't look like you might get into a fight with it. So I want to make more of a robot that threatens you in some way. I've done a lot of storytelling over the years. Um, I don't know, I made a lot of art, I made a lot of stuff. I, I started doing carpentry when I was 20 or something so I could never grow up because you can do carpentry anywhere. Uh, I don't know, I've always just been curious and really tactile. I don't know when it all started, it's just, I guess it's part of me. For me, being a maker is, um, is one who, a maker is somebody who um, manifests their will into the world uh, and it can be in all sorts of different mediums but it's really about the art of uh, taking your imagination and forcing that on the world um, and where did I learn that skill I don't know my mom was pretty determined growing up my grandmother used to make these really corny poems every year for Christmas uh, and say them in front of everybody and that gave me a lot of confidence to, I'm gonna say make an ass of myself, but make an ass of myself, take a risk and maybe it didn't work out. Um, and so I've done a lot of that over the years. Putting stuff together, Jesus, I have no idea where I got that, that, that skill set. Nobody in my family really put things together. So I'm not, not entirely sure where I got permission to do that. I was always, a, I was an art, kid and when I was younger I, you know I did a bunch of sculpture and I guess I like to draw and drawing is an important part of the maker storyline so you know I, I say you want, you want to make a thing real it starts with you have a, have an idea and then you give the idea a name and that name is story and once you give it a name and a story then we can talk about it and you can share it with me and then I make a really ca crappy sketch of the thing um, <clears throat> so yeah, so you, you tell a story that makes it real enough so somebody else can talk about it. Then you make a crappy sketch of the thing, and then you make a better sketch, and then you make a good sketch, and then you make a sketch model, and then you make a crappy model, and then you make a prototype, and then you make a real thing. You don't really have to ever get it right. You just have to fill in the details enough so that nobody cares anymore. That's when it's good enough and it's real. So I don't know. I've always been interested in that process. I guess. I was part of the maker movement before I had a maker space and I did it with stories when I when I got started I spent a year basically just telling people the story saying oh I'm thinking about doing this thing wouldn't it be cool if we had a space we could get together and work and, and everybody could get access to it we could share each other's tools and, and basically I would tell people the story and I would just watch their face and see if they were doing this or doing this and then I'd change my story and I'd tell the next person and watch to see if they were doing this or doing this until everybody was doing this. And then I realized that I had the story honed down. And I understood sort of what everybody was resonating around. Um, and that was a big part of generating the idea and sort of those was my early prototypes. They were really cheap. 
It was just a cup of coffee and a story. I didn't have to build anything. I could just use the imagination narrative to, to describe what it was and get a lot of feedback from people about it. Um, that being said, a whole bunch of people who said that they'd get memberships, who thought that was an awesome idea, very few of those people, maybe 3% of those people actually got memberships and signed up. The first person who wanted to get a membership walked by the building while I was in the squat showing like old 70s movies on a projector, giant on a wall, so I didn't go crazy. He walked by, I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I'll give you a membership. And he paid 30 bucks a month for hanging out in the building. It had nothing to do with making, just for getting together and talking about what's possible. So yeah, I don't think you need a space to, to be a maker at all. Yeah. It's helpful sometimes. You know, my first shop, I like to say, was a clamp and a stairwell. And that's tough. Some of the stuff, my projects were uh, cut short or unable to be accomplished because the space didn't facilitate it. So it's nice to have the space, um, but I don't think it's necessary.